Peter, you were going to say something before the break. We were we were talking about spirituality, and I guess um, I would conclude that with, with basically the problem with the theistic concept is it gives this figure that isn't seen, that no one's seen, power, and the assumption is that that person intervenes in life and takes things and condones and advocates and has judgment. That's a very dangerous notion because it removes our personal power. The bottom line is the fact of the, rea the reality is is that we are the power. We have to make change. No one else will. You and I are the ones that are going to stop the New World Order. We are the ones that are going to take down the guys that perpetrated 9-11. Not somebody else. No one's going to intervene. No one is up there to help us. And it's about time people realize that and get out of this convoluted paradigm. It's, that's just the way it is. And that's what all the evidence throughout history, throughout time, has proven. And the reason the masses are so controlled and we are so manipulated and feel so weak is because of this mass conditioning to think that we should give up our power to other people, whether it's the government or God. Danny Nagelwood, you're on the air. Go ahead. Yeah, um, you know, you're going to take this the wrong way, Peter J., director of the Zeitgeist, but uh, what you just said sounds exactly like Satanism, not saying that you are a satanic. I don't believe in Satanism. You, if you want to you know, use you know that what, word, you know what Satanism is? You know what Satanism idea. is? Atheists. People who do not believe in a God. People who believe that man is a God. That's yeah, what that's Satanism correct. is. You are God. Okay, then you are a Satanist. Well, have fun with that idea. Right. Real quick. Uh, you know, I've read about the Nicene Creed and uh, some paganism that you delve into with... Uh, the story that you call the man Jesus Christ, his real name is Yeshua ben Yosef. And if you've ever read Gnostic texts, you would see why they were hidden. If you've ever looked into um, the uh, Dead Sea Scrolls, you'd see why. I've actually read a book on the Dead Sea Scrolls by John Allegro called uh, The Dead Sea Scrolls and the Christian Myth. And he goes through and points out the Gnostic Christ. And he relates to it the fact that it is, in fact, a mythical idea. He was a mythical figure. I recommend that book I, to you, my friend. I understand that you, that you believe that. Um, no. It's not that I believe it. It's what, is, what, I've, been, it's what I've learned. I haven't, I haven't just thought these things up and have faith in them out of the middle of nowhere. I actually so learn and investigate and see quick. what's true. That's the failure you know? that all of you have. You don't learn. You don't look to see what's real. And I'm so frustrated by this well, culture. You know me. Because not not time, time. You know who I am. You know real. what I've researched. Like, you think that you know what I've researched. You do not. Well, all I know is what you're telling me. And if you don't the research, research, for example, if you go to my first list and read the books I've, I've read, and uh, look at, I've looked at, I've read the Gnostic Gospels. I've read the book on those. I'm familiar with all sorts of different interpretations. I'm well aware of Gnosticism. I'm well aware of the outline of Gnosticism by... By, uh, by constantly. Thanks for the call, Danny. Peter, I want to ask you this, too, because you did mention, you said that there's no outside force and we're the, the force and all this. Now, I do believe that many Christians are weak because they do just sit back and think that God will intervene and that we do need to intervene. But the Bible says to tie up your camels but have faith. Okay, so you gotta, you got to have faith. you got to actually do something. Faith without works is dead. But now let's take a, an analogy that I often use, a fish versus a human being. You get these fish in a, in a lake somewhere, and they have no idea about us and about our life, and they're just these fish in the thing, and every once in a while, one of their little buddies gets caught and taken away, and if they can even communicate, they tell each other that something just came down and took one of their buddies and he disappeared. They have no idea about all of this stuff up here, and we, in a sense, are fish in this giant fishbowl called Earth, and I think it's, it's ignorant of you to say that there is not a bigger being outside of us, outside of this dimension, that can do whatever it wants to do that set up these well, rules. Hey, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that at all, because if you want to use that type of self-similar fractalic parallel that you just described, the next larger degree would be the weather system. That would be what takes us out. It would be the tsunamis, if you want to be abstract like that. However, the, we taking fish out of the pond, we're not in control of the fish in any other capacity that eventually we'd have to reach down and rip it out. You know, we're not sitting there guiding and judging them. You know, it's a completely, it's a, it's a bad comparison. It's a bad analogy. Well, here, let me give you another one here. We, we, I'm, I'm not a parent, but many people have children. Okay, the child has a certain degree of freedom. It can do uh, within reason whatever it wants to do. It wants to do something specific. It comes and asks its mom or its dad, hey, dad, can you do this for me? Can you help this? If it's in the child's best interest, 
the parent will do it, it will help it. So don't you think that the same parallel is with us? We have a free will. We have we can do whatever we want to within reason. Uh, we can say, hey, God, Dad, can you do this for me? I need some help. If he thinks it's cool, then he'll do it. He'll step in. He'll make. I mean, haven't you had such just strange coincidences in your life where you've just stepped back and just thought that there is some sort of a divine force, there's some intelligence behind all of this, this isn't just happening, and I have a, a personal story I'll share with the audience maybe next week uh, about a recent instance like this, but wouldn't you agree with that, Peter? Yes, I would agree with that, but it doesn't come out of nowhere. It's not something that, you know, I, I just mystically feel or something like that. It's not esoteric. When When something goes well or I feel guided in some way, I can typically find reason for such. And if you want to really get abstract... If you really want to get abstract, the best analogy to think about orientation in our life would be gravity. Because people can have faith in aspects, but they never act upon them. But if I was to say, I have faith that gravity doesn't exist. I have faith, and I'm going to walk on the wall. Or actually, I'm not going to walk on the wall. I'm just going to claim faith, because I know I can't walk on the wall. And if I try to walk on the wall, I'm going to hurt myself. That is but the only, that's pretty much what it comes to foundational laws of nature. You go with the laws of nature. You don't swim against the current when the current can help you go the other direction. That's a much better concept. As far as, you know, an esoteric sense of internal guidance, I don't know about that. But I do know that there is a law of nature, and we are all nature. We are all a part of nature, and that is really the true spirituality. I mean, we're all one, and that interconnectivity does show itself in certain ways. I mean, I've been with friends of mine, and we have the exact same thought come at the exact same time. That's spirituality. I used to have cousins. I do have cousins. When they were, when they were children, they used to finish each other's sentences. It was spooky. That's because they're mm -hmm. form of the same. They're twins. They're form of the same DNA. They are spiritually similar, and they share each other's but isn't, vibes isn't and the most Jesus... vibes we all have of each other. You know, it's that's the notion that really needs to be understood. That uh, that's that's profound. That's profound. Feeling connectivity in nature, not to you know somebody that's you know, speaking to you or what have you. You know what I mean? That's, that's in my opinion, that's spirituality. But isn't it, isn't it interesting, though, that, or, I mean, that you could read the words of Jesus, that you can read the Bible, uh, that, that that's not a fantastic... The words of Jesus, though. The, 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 again, it's your opinion uh, that, that that's a fantastic way to connect with that source of spirituality. I mean, all of these people certainly aren't delusional. I know you said that many people have just been raised in the church and they're so ignorant. I chose Christianity by having certain questions about life that had answers that I wasn't finding in school, so I started reading the religious texts. And I tell you, I mean, I've read and studied and had classes on world religion. I've read most of the New Age books, the Satanic books, the Brava Gita I have. And I tell you, man, out of all those books, the one that I still find the best is the Bible and okay. the words of Jesus Christ. Okay. Well, you know what? I, I, I think your interpretation is, is, is adamant. I think, it's, uh, I think it's great, your feelings that you have, because you're obviously a very positive person. And... You know, what it comes down to, though, is you should take some time to actually look deeper, though. I mean, if what, uh, well, here's the reality. Trying to look what deeper, really Peter, happens I just when don't you see read anything. something is you're not taking in something. It's not given to you. You're realizing it. I really believe that we aren't told anything. We just remember because, as I said, we're all one. We're all interconnected. All knowledge is present at all times. When you, someone tells you something, they're not telling you. You're just realizing it. You're remembering. And I think that type of association is what you see when you read the Bible. And that's fine. I, I, you know, it just it comes down to the fact that people that claim certain aspects of histo history, and they claim that this happened and this happened when it clearly did not, that's when things get bad. When, when you're philosophically driven, I have no problem with that. I love philosophy. Everyone well, again, I, philosophy. Man, I that's wish we fine. had a second hour here, but, uh, you know, you, you make... Clear statements that you say are definitive when they're definitely open to interpretation. You are interpreting them. Uh, you, you make statements that this is, this is not. Maybe you can come on the show again, everybody. The movie is Zeitgeist, the movie. Just search for it on Google Video. And I want to thank you for coming on the show, Peter. All right, Mark. I appreciate you having me, man. All right, buddy. Take care. Power to the resistance.